Today on The Hookup, I'm going to show you how to take your holiday light show one step further by adding custom props like a wreath made out of PEX tubing, a 3D printed megastar, a corrugated plastic Tune 2 sign, and then I'm also going to show you how to easily add some RGBW spotlights to your show using existing Wi-Fi smart home products. One of my favorite parts about the Holiday Light Show hobby is the ability to get creative and come up with new and unique props that work with your show and look amazing. A light show using just your roof and window outlines can look pretty cool, but adding some other props gives you a little bit more creative choice and building them is pretty fun too. The first prop we're going to make today is a four layer wreath made out of PEX tubing. I've got one on my house that's made from 3D printed parts, but I've had some trouble with it holding its shape, so I designed another one that should be more rigid and can be made without a 3D printer. To build this project, you'll need 25 feet of 3 quarter inch white PEX tubing, a section of 3 quarter inch thin walled PVC pipe that's at least 5 feet long, some 3 quarter inch PVC pipe caps, 8 2 inch machine screws and some matching nuts, some wire, heat shrink tubing, solder, and of course LEDs. I used IP65 silicon coated WS2812Bs in the 30 LED per meter density. Once you've got all your parts together, start by cutting four 4 inch segments of your thin walled PVC. If you're using a PVC cutter like mine and it's gotten a little dull over the years, make sure to wear safety glasses because PVC goes everywhere when it shatters. After you've got those sections cut, you're going to need to cut out a 31 inch length that's going to be the structural piece. Go ahead and put your end caps on your structural piece and then make a mark directly under each end cap and then mark every two inches for a total of four marks at the top and four marks at the bottom. Next, you'll need to cut your lengths of PEX tubing. The rings are going to be 93 inches, 81 and a half inches, 69 inches, and 56 and a half inches. That adds up to exactly 25 feet, which is handy because PEX tubing is normally sold in increments of 25 feet. Next, you're going to drill holes in the middle of your 4 inch sections to complete the wiring later on. I used a 3 8 inch drill bit, but anything around that size should work. When drilling the PVC with a large drill bit, you should drill in reverse so the drill doesn't snatch the PVC out of your hands. Do as I say, not as I do. After that, you'll use your 4 inch sections to join your PEX lengths into circles and set them aside. At this point, if you used a hair dryer or a heat gun on the PEX, it would help them keep their shape, but it's not completely necessary. Next, you're going to attach your PEX sections to your structural piece using the 2 inch machine screws and nuts. Drill out the holes that you marked earlier on the structural piece with a quarter inch drill bit and then drill holes in each of the 4 inch connector pieces in the middle. Then attach the top with your 2 inch machine screws and nuts. Once all your tops are attached, measure to make sure your two sides are equal and then drill a hole in the PEX tubing at the bottom and attach each section. There's probably a good way to measure this to make it perfect, but I just eyeballed it and I think it looks great. Once you've got your wreath's preliminary structure completed, you'll need to get your LED strips together. So cut out sections of LEDs that are 42, 52, 61, and 71 LEDs long, and then solder on power and data lines to each of the ends. I recommend giving yourself between 10 and 12 inches of wire at the end of each strip. It's significantly more than you're going to need, but there's no need to cause yourself a headache later on to save 10 cents worth of wire. With the IP65 strips, you'll need to cut away a bit of the silicone near a set of copper pads. Then tin each pad with solder and tin your wire and connect them by using a little bit of heat to melt the pre-tinned ends together. After that, you should cover everything in hot glue for both stability and waterproofing. And then use a bit of heat shrink tubing to seal it all off. You'll know you've got a nice watertight connection when the hot glue oozes out of the end of the heat shrink tubing. To get the strips through your pecs, you don't really need any special tools since they should be rigid enough to push, but you could use wire tape or even a wire coat hanger if needed. Before you put your PEX tubing back in the structure, I recommend marking the PVC with the direction that the data wire will be traveling, and then make sure you orient all your strips correctly according to those arrows. Loop your PEX tubing and LEDs into a circle and thread the wires out of the holes in the 4 inch PVC section. This is the one point in this project where an extra set of hands would be extremely helpful. Unfortunately, everyone in my house was asleep, so I fumbled through it alone. After you've got each ring mounted, attach it to the bottom with your 2 inch hardware so it doesn't get pulled back out. Next, you'll need to make all of your electrical connections. All the positive wires are going to get connected together and all the negative wires are going to get connected together. This is going to ensure that you don't have any color inaccuracy due to voltage drop within your LEDs. The data wires are going to connect in a spiral pattern. And again, make sure that you're connecting the data out on one strip to the data in on the next strip using those arrows that you drew earlier. If you hook them up backwards, they're just not going to work. 
Also, don't be like me and forget to attach your main power and data leads before heat shrinking everything. If your PEX tubing came with a lot of labeling like mine did, you can use mineral spirits or acetone to take them off and it makes the whole thing look a little less industrial. As a last step, I used white duct tape to conceal the wiring on the front of the wreath. I could have used a 3D printed part for this, but I was trying to avoid 3D printing on this project. If you have a better idea for concealing these wires that would be more weather resistant, please leave it down in the comments. With the prop complete, you just need to find a way to control it. Some popular choices are WLED or my Holiday LED 2.0 code on a Node MCU. Or you could hook it up directly to a DMX pixel controller and add it to an x lights show that's sequenced to music. To make this model in x lights you're going to set up four different circular models and set the LEDs to 42, 52, 61, and 71. Then select top center as the starting location in either clockwise or counterclockwise depending on which way you routed the data. Add all the rings to a group and then your wreath is ready to be added to your sequence. The second DIY prop that we're going to look at is a 3D printed Megastar. I've said it in previous videos, but I'll say it one more time. If you're into DIY and you don't have a 3D printer, it is officially time to get one. I can't recommend the Ender 3 enough. I have both a bare bones Ender 3 and an upgraded Ender 5, and my Ender 3 consistently produces as good, if not better prints than the Ender 5, and it costs less than $200. I found this Megastar model by the user Degati on Thingiverse, and I've been happy enough with it that I thought it was worth sharing. The star prints out as five different pieces so it can fit on a standard 3D printer. The Thingiverse description suggested joining each part of the star together with epoxy. And I'm not sure if I did something wrong, but when I tried that, the whole structure crumbled under the weight of the 120 LEDs that it has. So to solve that problem, I created a smaller inner star that would fit onto my 3D printer's bed and could be used to glue each individual star arm together, making the entire structure significantly more rigid. I also included four mounting holes on the inner star for attaching your star to your mega tree pole with zip ties. Again, you could control this with any LED software that you wanted, but to add it to your x lights show, you're going to make three different stars. The outer star with 50 LEDs, the middle star with 40 LEDs, and the interior star with 30 LEDs. Then put all the stars in a group and you're all done. 3D printing is effective and it's fun because you can make all the parts right in your house. It's really cheap, but it's still not the cheapest and most cost-effective material for making your props for your light show. That title still belongs to corrugated plastic. Corrugated plastic is an amazing material for this hobby because it's really cheap, water-resistant, and relatively sturdy. Companies like Holiday Coro use CNC machines to mill out the shapes and holes for their pixels to mass-produce these props, but you could certainly do it yourself with a jigsaw and a decent drill bit if you wanted to. One prop that I needed to add this year was a lighted tune to sign to tell people which radio station to listen to the music to my show. It was a prop that I'd planned on making myself, but when I noticed that Holiday Coro's tune to sign was only $28 and came with a sturdy plastic frame, the DIY option became a little less appealing. The sign works by routing pixels through the back of the sign, which can be a bit tricky depending on which numbers you need. A trick that I finally figured out was to skip some of the holes in the number matrix to allow myself to get the pixels back into the right shape. In x lights to be able to control each number individually, I set up the sign as a single line of LEDs, and then I use the submodel menu to separate out the different words and numbers. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about the specific numbers of pixels since everyone will have different numbers of pixels corresponding to different radio stations, but the submodel menu is a really good way to be able to assign specific properties to a part of a model rather than to the entire thing. I'm super happy with the way that the sign came out, and I usually run it at just 3% brightness throughout the entire show. But I also like that I can fade it all the way to the black when the rest of the display goes dim, and I can use animations on it when the entire display is doing the same thing. The last thing that I wanted to talk about in this video is RGBW lighting, which I actually covered in a video last year, but it's significantly easier to do now, so I wanted to do a quick update. Last year I showed how to take apart a 6 inch RGBW downlight from Zemismart and use Arduino to reprogram it, but it required soldering and I know that tends to scare some people away. Now an easy to use Linux script called Tuya Convert has made it trivially simple to install custom firmware on anything that's designed to work with the Smart Life app without taking anything apart or doing any soldering. These lights work with common ESP8266 firmware like Tasmoda, but I've also written my own firmware for a handful of products to control using the E131 protocol and X lights to use in my holiday show. I'm specifically using Zemismart 6 inch RGBW spotlights on my porch, Lojas RGB CCT bulbs in my carriage lights, and Novastella RGB CCT floodlights for a wall wash effect on the front of my house. 
I have the firmware for each of these devices on my GitHub page, so just download the INO file for the correct product, update the user configuration section of that program with your network's information, use these options for the board, and select Sketch Export Compiled Binary. This will generate a .bin file in the Sketches directory that you can use to upload to your device from the Tasmoda web UI. If you need to change any information later on or you want to go back to Tasmoda, my files do have Arduino OTA updating enabled, so they're going to show up on your list of ports in Arduino. To add them in Xlights, you'll first define them as their own E131 controller using Unicast, and you'll put in the IP address of the specific bulb. I put them all in their own universe with only four channels, which simplifies the next step, which is to use a single LED defined as four channel RGBW with an increased radius and transparency to represent the model of your floodlight, downlight, or light bulb in your preview window. I think lights like this are by far the most difficult element to add to any show tastefully, but when you do get it right, I think they have an awesome effect that can't be accomplished with LED pixels. The other upside is that you can continue to use these lights all year round with Home Assistant and MQTT. And since they all contain white LEDs as well, they'll fit right in with your non-holiday lighting. If you want more information about any of these builds, check out the links in the description where I've posted more close-up photos of each of these projects. Thank you to my awesome patrons over at Patreon for continuing to support my channel. And if you're interested in supporting my channel, please check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. And as always, Thanks for watching The Hookup.